So first is, what do we do if a client walks in the door uh, and knows nothing? Like it comes to the front desk, you happen to be up there. So this was, Silvana will be mostly doing this, answering phones and reading, but it happens. Somebody walks in and you're there and they go, oh yeah, I'm here because I want to come here. What can you tell me? So there's that little interview that I thought I would share with you. And then we'll go into that initial intake interview and I'll show you kind of what can happen during that interview as well, um, or that session. So I'll start with the front desk one. So here's what I wrote up for the front desk. Um, a couple different scenarios. One is that the client walks in and they don't know what they want, but they know they need to get better and they have pain. And so the first question I usually ask is, oh, are you seeing a doctor or other healthcare professional? If they say yes, then um, I would either say, well, maybe I should set you up with a physical therapist unless their pain is super mild, right? Um, so if their pain, the where I'm saying, and you can see in, Anyway, we'll, usually if they come in with pain and they're under doctor's care, I'm going to say, oh, are you coming in? Would you like to see a physical therapist? And I'd usually say, steer them in the direction of physical therapy eval. And if they say, well, I'm not really sure, I don't know, then we have those 15-minute discovery visits where they can get more information. And they basically, I'm the one right now doing most of those discovery visits. And so they can come in, do that. 15 minutes with me, and then I can help guide them to the PT or Pilates instructor for that initial visit. If they say they're not under doctor's care, but they have pain, you might ask, what level of pain do you have? On a scale of zero to 10, that's sort of our normative scale in the medical world. Um, zero being no pain, 10 being the most pain you could imagine. Where are you on that scale? If there are three and below, or you know, one, two, then I think that could really go directly to Pilates. If it's a three and up, I would say let maybe safer to have a physical therapy eval. And then if they're not sure that they want to do the physical therapy eval, maybe send them to a discovery visit, 15 minutes to talk with me, um, and we can decide what's most appropriate. We, we don't want to push somebody into physical therapy if they don't want to be in physical therapy. In fact, we want more people going into Pilates than physical therapy if we can, but I also don't want to miss something that, that we should not be missing. So that's why the caution on that side. So that's sort of scenario one. Scenario two, with client comes in, no pain, no injury, um, but is coming in either they want a healthy life, including fitness, injury prevention, past history of injury, they don't want to flare it up. They can definitely go into that Pilates initial visit and if there's uncertainty because they're hemming and hawing for some reason, then a discovery visit. But more likely that person is going to go straight to that Pilates intake. If they want to come in for fitness, that's a Pilates intake. If they heard about us from a friend and they're not sure what to do, if they don't have an injury or pain, then Pilates intake um, and then discovery visit if they think they might need more. Um, or if they have a pain or a chronic injury, then I would say try and send them the PT route for that PT eval. So that would be sort of the directions I would go. Um, if they come in and they really only want to take group classes, I would they still need to go to a Pilates intake because we want to um, help our clients who are doing those classes get to a place where they're actually getting results and to help them get results and set them up with a home program and really make sure they know their bodies well. We want to, we, and we know their bodies well for when they come into classes. We want to have that initial intake. And then remember our, our um, most basic membership now has a monthly Pilates check-in where we get to check in with them. We get to upgrade the home program. We get to help them move and make sure that they're progressing well. So that's, those are sort of the scenarios. Sometimes people come in and they go, I want to go straight to PT and uh, I'm coming here for PT. That's an easy one, right? They just get signed up for PT. If they say, I'm just coming in for Pilates. I don't want to deal with any PTs or anything. Then great. Just put them in the Pilates intake. And then the great news is that even in that Pilates intake, they can, if you, they go to Pilates intake and it's not appropriate for some reason, or the Pilates instructor feels like it's not appropriate, they can always steer them into a PT visit as well. And that is actually one of the programs in the, in the 
a lot of these flow chart we have the the most um intense one has a monthly pt visit so we could also steer them in that direction from that Pilates initial intake. So don't worry if that happens. Here's a little sample dialogue for what we could use um, if somebody comes in, especially when they start asking about cost and what the membership is all about and all of that. So they might come in and say, well, tell me more about your services. I don't know what I need and I don't really understand what you're doing. And so we have some sort of, we're trying to think of things that make people feel confident, make pe people get the feeling that we want them to have. So my, my theme phrase that I've come up with is that we are an integrated team approach to your physical well-being. right? We are here, we're integrating everything we know, we're, we're a team, and we're trying to help you get well physically. And so because of that, we're enrolling clients on a monthly membership basis so we can ensure that you reach your goals. Uh, could you share some of your goals with me or what are your goals so that I note them and so we can definitely start working towards them right away, right? And the idea here is that the, we make it very client-centric so they know that they have a big say in what's happening. They know, we, they know that we know what their goals are and we can really help them go in the right direction. Um, and so maybe they share a goal here. I want to be pain free and I want to be able to hike and take care of my kids or my grandkids without pain or worry. And then I could say something like, well, that's a great goal. We can help you. We can really help you move toward that goal. We'd love to be able to help you. Um, maybe add a client story about, you know, we have lots of clients that come in with similar goals and we've been really successful. Our team's really successful helping them. Um, and then I'd be happy to set you up with that initial session. So um, in that initial session, the PT or the flight instructor will spend the time with you to really help you choose the membership program that's right for you. Um, and then they might say, would that be okay? And they say, yeah, that, that sounds good. What is this going to cost? And so the, the language around that is the monthly membership ranges in price based on the required services or the services included in each membership. And then we can show them, we'll have it at the front desk. And I think we'll also have a chart at um, that you guys can have to carry with you to that initial meeting laminated chart. And you can say, here's the membership chart for Pilates. Here's the ones for PT. Here's where we are. And this is, I think after seeing, you know, after working with you for that hour, looking at your posture, looking at how you move, I think I'll have a really good idea and, and listening to your goals. We'll have a really good idea of what's going to be the best fit for you. Um, so if, if they're asking right there on the spot and before you sign them up for anything, you might say it's, uh, I, I'm not the right person right now to help you choose, but, or I, after that first visit, then I can help you choose because I want to make sure that we get the right thing, but here's the idea. And if you're thinking of coming in twice a week, here are sort of those options with coming in twice a week. So we can look at that in more detail after that intake. Um, so then, um, I think that's basically it. And then the other thing to really note or some, if it comes up is to say, you know, we want you to get better. And as you get better, the memberships get cheaper and cheaper as you need less of our services and just move towards that maintenance program. The part that puts a little pressure is that initial Pilates visit. So um, can I use one of you guys to, so that I can interview you, have you guys be the client? Okay, here we go. So Genevieve, thank you so much for coming in today. What, what brings you in? Well, actually I saw that you came in and spoke to Silvana at the front desk. And I saw that you were really excited to try and get stronger. Can you tell me a little bit more what brings you to Synergy Plus today? Uh, yeah, I am looking to get stronger overall. And um, I feel that I need a little guidance because um, I get some knee pain um, and some IT band tightness uh, that I can't quite seem to get rid of. And so I assume there's some misalignment happening. Okay, that sounds great. I would love uh, to be able to help you with this. Uh, let me just ask you a few more questions. Do you have any pain associated with the knee and the IT band? Uh, yeah, a little bit of pain in the knee. It's not a crazy amount of pain. It's just a little uncomfortable. Um, but I know that that can get worse. So right now it's at a, around a two or so. Okay. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. So 
what about other goals? So is your main goal to just get rid of that pain or do you have sports or activities that you do? Any functional things, any functional activities that you do? Um, I'm a hiker and I would like to be able to run, but the knee pain is something that I'm afraid of exacerbating. Okay, perfect. So what I would love to do if you're okay with it, oh, sorry, I should ask, is there any other parts of your body, any other past injuries or anything that you think I should know about that you didn't put in on your intake form? Uh, I get a little low back achiness every once in a while, but it's no big deal. <laughs> okay, great. We'll make sure that the stay is not a big deal. <laughs> so what I'd love to do is um, take a look at your posture today and just see what that looks like, just so I have a good sense of what your whole body looks like and how things align. And that would help me know a little bit more about how your knee aligns. And then um, I might just watch you walk a couple times. And then I would love to just get you moving a little bit and we can talk about more about how you're feeling while we do that. Would that be okay? That sounds good. Okay. So I'm going to push pause button right now on our interview. So that I would just basically start like that. Um, start friendly. You just share with them how happy we are that they chose us and how excited we are to help them because we are. And then I could take a look. I could decide if I want with the knee. I always like to look at, we'll definitely look at posture with everyone, but I also like to look at how they're walking because sometimes I might see something there that I wouldn't see just in standing. And even if you don't know what you're seeing in the walking, it's good just write, writing down. If you just look at their feet, look at their knees, you know, look at their hips, the more you start watching people walk, the easier it gets to start seeing things that don't look just right. And if you just note that, uh, you might be able to link it to something later, or you could mention it. Sometimes I say, did you realize that your right foot turns out a lot more than your left when you walk? And do you know that you're really heavy on your right leg or... When you say, you know, if you bring up, they might say they, that might trigger something in their mind to remember something else to share with you too. So we're going to imagine now that we've done this postural assessment and this gait assessment. I've done it with Genevieve and I've done a, uh, a little short thing on the equipment. And then I've also done a piece of a little series of exercises on the mat that I think would be helpful for her to have at home so that we can make a home program. That's really key. And that's what's going to also set us apart from other people. And so we're getting down. I'm going to leave about 10 minutes at the end of our session to go through what, what about the monthly membership program. And so with somebody like our little example, I don't feel like I need to rush Genevieve into a PT session. I feel like, you know, she's not in a lot of pain probably some alignment issues. These are not, not abnormal things. Some maybe history of low back pain from before, but I would think we could start with Pilates. And if she doesn't get better, I can always have her see one of the PTs. That's still always an option, no matter which program she ends up on. So let's, any questions so far? Is that all feel okay? Okay. So as we get to the end of the session, um, these are the questions I wanna have in my head as I'm going through my session. How coordinated is the client? So I want to kind of make up in my mind about if it's Genevieve, and we all know Genevieve right now, she's super coordinated. So if I give Genevieve a cue, she's going to be able to carry it out. And if she can't carry it out, she at least has the awareness that she's not doing it right. So that's a great person to go the Pilates route. If this person, and, and also somebody who can self-correct on her own in a class, if she hears a cue, is she going to be able to correct it? Or is she going to have no idea or think it doesn't pertain to her? So you're trying to figure out, is this somebody who can be in a group setting and self-correct? Because remember, right now, in, even in our group classes now, we're not putting hands on people in the groups, when, even when they're live, because we don't want to spread um, to get too close or spread germs from one client to another, right? So none of it's hands-on. So is this person somebody who can hear a cue and adjust their body? Or do they need some hands-on work? because that's going to determine private or group, right? And then, um, so coordination, how much pain or discomfort does the client get in during your session? Any, some, none. Um, if it's a lot of pain and things don't seem like they're working out right, again, you can always switch gears to the PT route. If it's a little discomfort and you can help guide their knee or their body into the right position with your hands and they, the pain goes away, that's great. Um, 
if it's something where they just feel really tight and they say, um, yeah, you know, I, I feel really tight, that might be an indication that maybe a massage could help too. So then you might think, you might ask, have you tried massage? Does that help? Does it not? You can always ask that. Um, and then maybe we want to include a program that has some massage or not, if you feel like they need that. And then the other thing, so point one, how coordinated. How, point two, how much pain. And then three, how motivated is the client to do home exercises every day? So if the client is not very motivated, we need to find a way to motivate them. Meaning we need to either get them in to privates or group classes and get them signed up so that they commit to coming um, if they're not gonna be doing the home program. Our goal is to get them to their goal. So we need to give them ways to get there and reasonable for each person. Some people won't do a thing on their own. They need to sign up for a class or have um, a private session to do it. Some people can do things on their own. So motivation. Okay, and then here also going through your head, does it need to be a one-on-one -on -one or can they do group classes? So remember that in any of the packages, the clients have access to uh, any group class and the whole library of recorded classes, which we've been putting together for a good amount of time now. So there's a ton of classes in there. So um, what, which one do you think? Do they need that one-on-one -on -one and, or can they go into a group class? And then, uh, then finally, did they have a financial limitation that prevents them from be able, being able to do what you would think is the best program for them? And if they do, it's, you can always tell them, you know, here's what I would recommend for us to get to your goals in a shorter amount of time. If that really is a financial stress, we don't want that for you. So maybe we can do this program, but realize that you're going to commit to it for longer. It's just going to take a little bit longer, maybe to get the cues right, to get your alignment right. But I think this would still work for you. So you can give them that option to, to choose. And then you also want to tell them, you know, we think that when you do a month of twice a week Pilates privates, you get a lot out of it. There's a big push, you know, in that first month when you get things right initially, and then it's really easy to move to a lower costing program with less one-on-one -on -one time, a program with less one-on-one -on -one time, and that will eventually cost you less. And that's our goal for you is that you get to a maintenance program and that you just can maintain either in our group classes or even with your home program. So that is kind of, um, have how I think I would be thinking in my head um, of how I want to decide which program it is. And then you want the client to leave the session knowing and feeling, knowing which program is going to be best for them, feeling that they've really been heard, feeling that someone actually cares about them and gets what they need, and then having hope that their problem can be solved. Um, so they can also have, make a commitment. We need them to participate in their healing process or their wellness process. Otherwise, we can't do it without their input, right? So they need to be honest about what they're willing to do, what they're going to actually do at home, and um, if they're really going to commit. We want them to try and do something every day, a little bit every day. Um, so I think that's that's basically it. 